Greetings and salutations. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Wesley Webb, pastor of the Grace Baptist Church in Greater Downtown Metropolitan, Matney, South Carolina, and welcome to the Higher Grounds podcast and today's morning minute meditation. Now, I want to follow up on this idea that I shared uh, recently about grieving the devil. We said that there are three ways mentioned in the scripture, described in the scripture, whereby we as Christians can offend the Holy Spirit of God. One was by grieving the Holy Spirit of God. Now, I want to share a second one with you, if you would, please. You know the verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 10. The second way we can offend the Holy Spirit of God is by quenching the Holy Spirit of God. Quench not the Holy Spirit. Now, what is this offense? What does it mean to quench the Holy Spirit of God? The word quench, it means to extinguish or to go out. Again, the offender, the letter was written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Thessalonica, clearly written to saved people. So we understand that full well. We understand it is saved people that can quench the Holy Spirit of God. Now, who is it that is offended here? It is the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, the language is taken from uh, the way of putting out a fire. Uh, and in that sense, we are not to extinguish the influences of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. So is the Holy Spirit of God viewed as a fire? Without chasing this too far, Matthew chapter 3, verse number 11, um, I indeed baptize you with water and repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Acts chapter 2, verse number 3, there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. So indeed the Holy Spirit of God in the scriptures is likened unto the fire of God in our hearts, burning in our lives. So the outcome, when we quench the Spirit of God, we're putting out his fire and the effectiveness of his fire in our lives. Question. How do we quench or extinguish or put the fire of God out in our lives? Thought about it this way. Fire can be put out in one of three ways. First, fire can be put out by saturation. You can put a fire out by pouring water on it. Fire can be put out by suffocation. You can put a fire out by putting something over it that will smother it and reduce the oxygen that it is required in order to burn. And you can put a fire out by starving a fire. Just neglecting to fuel the fire, that is giving it the substance it needs to burn and to keep burning. So the question becomes, then what has put the fire out in your life? But let's turn this around. Let's reverse engineer this idea. Would it be good as a Christian for the devil to be quenched for a change in our life. Would it be good for us if we could quench the devil to extinguish his fire and the effectiveness of his fire and his efforts in our lives? Maybe it's high time that we saturate Satan's fire in my life. Maybe it's high time that we put out his fire by pouring some water on it. The water of the scriptures, the water of the Holy Spirit of God. Maybe it's high time in our lives that we suffocate Satan's fire in our lives. Quit breathing into that fire, that which it requires to keep burning. Just, just quit breathing life into it. Maybe it's high time that we starve Satan's fire in our lives. Neglect to fuel the fire Quit giving it something to burn, and it'll inevitably go out in our lives. I'm just throwing this out there. I'm not trying to twist the scriptures or make them say anything they do not say. I just think that it is. it stands to reason. If we can quench the Holy Spirit of God in our lives, that we can behave in such a manner otherwise opposite that we would be quenching the devil in our lives. Well, that's all for today's Morning Minute Meditation. Y'all have a great day, and remember, it is what it is.